What is up YouTube? We are back with another video from Two Bros Performance. Working on Project Grey Matter. We got a lot of stuff to do today. We're running out of time, so let's get with it. Today, we are going to be doing some work on the floor of the bug. We're going to be mounting the fuel cell and getting pretty much whatever else we can done. Hopefully we'll be working on the trans cross member also. Let me show you just a little bit of what I've done and what I'm thinking about and what we're looking at doing today. So I've got this set of manifolds that uh, we just had laying in our pile because we got a bunch of LS parts kicking around. And uh, I was looking and I think I might be able to make this one work. It goes down, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, right just about into the frame right there. But uh, it almost clears the steering shaft. So what I think I'm going to have to end up doing is I'm going to have to take it, I have to chop right here all the way across. I'm either going to have to get some piping, or I might just take another manifold and chop it and extend it out probably two inches so it pushes the whole thing over to about here, and then it'll give me room for my steering shaft to go all the way through. So that shouldn't be too bad. Also, when I'm in there, I can cut that end off and reroute it a little bit and route my exhaust down next to the frame like I'm planning. The passenger side, on the other hand, is just about perfect. Bolt right up, clears, and if you can see faces right down and it's going to go right between the floor frame, the floor skeleton and the frame right there. Just drop right out. We'll do some true dual exhaust back and uh, call it a day. I might even route the exhaust back right out underneath the skirt right there just for fun. We'll see if I end up doing that. So I got to wait for my buddy to get home because I borrowed the manifolds from him. So I gotta wait for him to get home, talk to him about it, and uh, I won't be, I don't think I'll be welding those up today, but it's a good idea, a good plan, see what he thinks about it, and then I also am going to have to re relocate my steering wheel just a little bit. Let me show you. My seat is going to sit right about here, which is going to put my pedals right about there, and I need to bring the whole steering wheel out probably five or six inches to about here, so that... Uh, to right about there so that it's comfortable because right now sitting in my seat I have my hand stretched all the way out to the steering wheel it's just not good so you have to do that uh, we're gonna work on the trans cross member I was trying to use this stock one because it sits over the frame like it should and it's honestly just really stinking nice it'd be really awesome to be able to just bolt that in drill another hole for my mount right there and call it a day but that's a lot of extra weight that I don't want to deal with and it is a lot of drilling and cutting to make it work and I just decided if I'm going to do that I might as well make my own cross member so I've got a chunk of steel here not sure if I'm going to use it it's pretty thick so it should be fine but uh, I just used my angle finder and a string and gauge the angle from my output shaft on my transmission over to the input shaft on my differential got that pretty well lined up how I want it so I just need to make a cross member, get the trans sitting where it's going to sit, and then we can pull it all out and do some other stuff we need to. Also, I might need to buy some steel. I need to make a uh, little mount right there for my fuel cell. That's another thing I need to get done. So we got a nice long list, a lot of stuff we can do today. Another thing that I have to get done today is I haven't even finished welding that corner right there, but you can see there's a gap between the floor and the frame right there because you can see how the frame is flat all the way here and then dips down right there. So what I did was I welded that piece on and I welded, let's see if it'll turn, welded that piece on and then I welded that crossbar to it right there and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a couple of two inch or I need to measure it out but cut a couple of little spacers and weld it from the frame to the floor right there. Obviously I've got some bracing, you can see it cut right there. It's going to go in here and we are going to be pretty much done with the floor. So, I need to make those little pedestals right there, weld in the other bracing, do my uh, fuel cell mount, or I need to mount my fuel cell, transmission cross member. Hopefully we can get most of that done today, and then uh, I've got most of the supplies to do it, so it's going to be pretty much free. And yeah, get as much as we can done. Uh, as soon as I get the transmission mounted in its final mounting place, then I will be able to... Uh, measure it out exactly and get a length for my drive line. Right now I'm still trying to decide. I do have this drive line right here that is the uh, stock drive line from the GMC Jimmy. 
so it's about seven miles long but it's a really heavy thick drive shaft and I'm not sure if I want to use that yet and so we'll see I'm gonna measure it all out I might just take it to a shop and have them chop it down like the original plan was or I may do some pricing and some searching and see and I might just end up getting a custom drive line custom length they make them they're not too expensive it just uh, depends on what the budget allows so gotta do that I've got my uh, throttle assembly and throttle cable that I need to put on uh, I need to get that trans mounted so that I can pull the engine out and finish up my firewall and everything and I can start mounting my pe pedal assemblies and everything here's another thing that I was looking at today uh, I think after I pull this engine out again I'm going to remove all of this this is just like a fresh air fan and stuff underneath the dash that wasn't really that important it houses a lot of wiring and a lot of electronics that well not electronics but a lot of wiring that I'm going to be pulling out anyway and so what I think I'm going to do is take this cover off it's just a couple of screws I've had it off before I'm going to cut everything off right there and clear it back and then it'll give me enough room to do something like this. So another issue I've been running into with this car is hood clearance. The way my motor mounts are set up and everything, as you can see, I don't have a lot of hood clearance. Obviously that's sitting off the block and stuff. It's not sitting where it's gonna sit. But I'm, I'm just about right there when it's sitting how it needs to. It's really close and so what I my hood is kind of a bubble shape. The Volkswagen hoods come up and they're kind of curved. And so what I may do is I may get rid of all that anyway for just for room in the engine bay. And uh, I'm gonna try it, I'll throw my hood back on and I'll test fit it and I'll see. If I can get the hood to close with the intake on backwards, then I'm just gonna do a 90 degree, probably three inch, we'll see. Uh, cold air intake that probably comes out this way and we'll go I'll put a heat shield around it and go out. It might go into the wheel well or something. I don't know, but I'll do a cold air intake that way. Um, worst case scenario, though, I'll just go with the original plan and I'll put put my intake on like that, which gives me not quite as much clearance as I want, but gives me enough. I'll put the hood on and I'll do something that my brother actually did on his car that I'll show you guys, and I will space the hood. So he dropped the hood down and he actually put a spacer right here in the back and so his hood sits just slightly, probably, his is only probably half an inch up, but he had to do that for hood clearance issues also. Um, it looks really good, you can hardly tell, and another thing that I like is it gives it good venting. It lets the, the hot air vent out the back. So I think I might do that. We'll see, looking into it. A little bit of a ramble here in this video, but yeah, so that's the plan for today. I got a lot of stuff to do, so let's get with it. just roughly set in place we'll see I'm liking how it looks so we've got a hole right there I'm not sure if you can see it we've got a hole right there and a hole right here hole right there hole right there we got two of them so I might end up just welding a tab onto the bottom of each one of those and then be able to just put my bolt up through actually I bolt down through with a nut on it just mount it like that it should be pretty simple alrighty you can see all my junk here get ready to cut that one by one inch tubing into two 22 inch sticks and then two four inch sticks 
So I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want to do it, and I think I figured it out. So, we've got this crossbeam in here. That chunk of metal is just set up there. Don't worry about that. But, what we're going to do is we're going to weld that into place on the frame. Then I have two supports coming across either way. And then a 4 inch post holding it up. And then I'm just going to use the tabs to mount my fuel cell. So, I decided I'm going to put the fuel outlets facing backwards. That way when I launch, it'll actually push all the fuel backwards and keep it supplied. Because I'm worried if I put the fuel outlets facing forward, like my original plan, that if I launch it with a lower fuel, it might starve it. So, we're going to do that real quick. Um, I am going to start cutting and get it all lined up and weld it in. Sorry for not getting that many angles. I'm not getting much footage of what I'm doing because it's hard to record and cut and get all the work done at once. So, we're going to get better at it. With time, I promise you I will get better. But for now, I'll just uh, kind of show you before and then after and just uh, show you the progress I'm making. Alrighty, so here is the mount that I came up with. I'm going to put one more cross piece in between there. But uh, it holds it pretty well. That is nice and close to my AN fittings right there. Which is nice because I'll be able to unbolt those right there. Unbolt the tabs. I'll be able to thread my fittings on. And then uh, actually this sits so close that it'll be able to hold my fitting on still. When I bolt it back, it's going to push up against it and keep it from backing off. It's not really that important, but I was doing it and it just kind of worked out and I figured it's an extra safety. I'm not too worried about my fuel line backing off, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to be safe. So, we're going to take this in the car and uh, show you how it's going to sit. Don't know how well you can see that, but obviously I'm going to grind this clean and then uh, grind the frame clean where it welds right there, but it's looking pretty good. I'll be able to set my fuel cell right on it. Pretty excited, making progress little by little. I just got the fuel cell set in. Everything's looking pretty good. You can see I've got that cross from the frame over to the other side. I'm gonna have to drill holes, mount the tabs right there. Looks like it's gonna work pretty well, pretty excited. Alrighty guys, I got my fuel cell nice and mounted back here, just where I want it. So that's gonna do very nicely for me. I got a temporary cross member set in place to see how I like it. And I like it a lot, so I'm probably going to go back to the steel supply shop and get a chunk of metal just like that, but a lot thicker because that's pretty thin walled. So we'll do that. Um, in my last video that I made when I fixed the rear suspension, I didn't show you guys what I did to fix it. A couple of you actually reached out to me and told me that uh, I forgot to show you guys. I, I'm sorry, I completely forgot. So, let me show you the rear suspension, kind of explain how I fixed it, what I did, what was wrong, all that. You can see right there the bracket is facing how it should be, almost all the way down, just a little bit backwards. And this bracket also. So that's going to be perfect. That's going to allow it to, uh, actually when the spring compresses, that's going to allow the bracket to rotate backwards how it should. Sorry I forgot to show you guys that. That's what I did. I just readjusted those. Also, I found out that uh, I did it all back here in the dark in the Connex and I don't know how I missed it but I ended up not having the leaves sitting tightly on the mounts on the axle. So I got that all done. Tightened it all up. Now I've got the right pinion angle. Beautiful wheel gap on either side. A lot of stuff in here. Beautiful wheel gap. We've got it hanging out and sitting centered how it should. I'm going to put everything away and get ready. i got to head out, but uh, we got quite a bit done today. I'm pretty excited. Um, hopefully, next time I'm down here, I'll be able to get even more done. Hopefully, we can keep making progress on this and get it to LS Fest West 2020. I'm pretty excited. Um, I'm trying to make progress on this, but right now, my uh, financial situation isn't letting me make as much progress as I want. So, hopefully I'll be able to sell something here soon. I got a dirt bike I'm trying to sell and another car I'm trying to sell. If I can sell one of those, we're going to get to LS Fest. Um, we're going to get as far as we can right now. But, thank you guys for watching and supporting. And please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. And stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Bye!